Ganesh Deep and today's topic is Pests of Petty. Rice, the scientific name of which is Uriza sativa, is a staple food for almost all parts of the world. It belongs to family Gramine. In India, it is a major cereal crop that extensively grown. However, most of the paddy farmers face huge economic losses in paddy cultivation due to the damage caused by the insect pests. According to one estimate, the rice crop alone in India suffers damage due to the insect pests and diseases more than 200 crores annually. Today, we are going to discuss about the biology of some economically important insect pests of paddy. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to explain the systematic position, habits, morphology and life cycle of Gandhi bug that is known as Leptocorisa varicornis. About the systematic position, habits and damage caused by the rice grasshopper, rice stem borer and rice beetle that is known as Hispa. So let us start one by one and discuss in detail. Have a look on the pictures of four economically important specific pests of paddy which damage the rice crop at different stages either by one or other way. Their common and scientific names are Rice Gandhi Bug, Leptocoriza varicornis, Rice Grasshopper, Heroglyphus benian, Rice stem borer, Triporeza incertulus, and rice beetle, Hispa armigera. First of all, we will study the detail of Leptocoriza varicornis, commonly called as rice gandhi bug or the rice bug, sometime the paddy fly. Regarding its systematic position, this pest belongs to Phylum arthropoda, class insecta. Order Hemiptera, family Coridae, genus Leptocorsia, and species is Vericornis. As far as its geographical distribution is concerned, it is found in most of the rice growing areas of India and its distribution extends over the whole of the Southeast Asia from China to Japan in the north to Sri Lanka in the south. It is also found in Australia and the Philippine island. In our country, it is a serious pest of UP and Bihar. Regarding its host plant, Leptocorisa mainly feeds on rice plant. It also feeds on maize, jowar, bajra, millets and some grasses and sometimes sugarcane also. Let us have a look on its general appearance and identification. The adult Gandhi bug is a long cylinder insect with broad head, long cylinder legs and four jointed antennae. You can see here that it has globular protruding eyes in addition to small ocelli. Ocelli means simple eyes which are difficult to see. The color pattern consists of a mixture of green and brown. The younger stages being more greenish and the older ones more brownish. So you can see in this video that nymphs are green in color and the adults are brownish. You can see here their long cylinder legs and four jointed antennae. Big globular protruding eyes also seen in the video. They got their name because they emit a strong unpleasant aromatic smell from its odoriferous glands on the thorax. Hindi word gandh which means unpleasant odor or smell. So this insect has got this epithet because of the offensive odor it emits. No sexual dimorphism is found in this pest as male and female bugs are alike and this is a diurnal pest. Now we will discuss its habits. Leptocoriza is a diurnal insect and is more active during morning and evening hours. The adult insects are usually found in aggregations or groups 
when disturbed adults emit an unpleasant odor that's why they called as gandhi bug it reproduces from july to november and hibernate from december to february like all true bugs they have piercing and sucking mouth parts that puncture the substrate they are feeding on which can damage plant tissue and reduce grain yields now the life cycle the entire life cycle of leptocoriza vericornis is completed in 4 to 5 weeks and there are five broods in one season the main reproduction occurs from july to november and after that it hibernates from december to february so the pest makes its first appearance with the onset of monsoon rains and starts breeding on grasses and other wild host on the field the life cycle of gadiba comprises three stages first is egg nymph and adult let us study some more about the different stages of the life cycle the adult female bug lays about 24 to 30 blackish brown small bead like eggs in long string like rows which are glued to the paddy leaves these are oval flat with concave margins and about 1 mm in length the incubation period depends on the environmental temperature and it varies from 5 to 8 days after the incubation period eggs hatch into the nymph nymphs are small cylinder pale green long legged and devoid of wings the nymphs grow into the adults in 15 to 18 days after undergoing five moldings the nymphs develop into the adults which are having wings and they are brown in color the life span of the adult is 33 to 35 days so the life cycle is completed in 4 to 5 weeks and adult lays egg after the incubation period of 5 to 8 days these eggs hatch out into the nymph these nymph go through five moltings in 15 to 18 days they are developed as the adult now watch its life cycle in the nature these are the eggs which are oval shaped and dark reddish brown in color they are laid in row and glued with the leaf this is the nymph which is green in color and do not have wings but they are long legged and bears antennae and this is the adult stage which is brown in color and fully developed have a look now we will discuss the damage caused by this pest both the nymph and the adult are the damage causing stages in the life cycle they suck the sap and the milky stage of the paddy grains is their chief target so they suck out milky juice leaving the white chaffy husk in the position on the ear heads the damaged grain marked by the black spot of fungus also in case of severe infestation practically all the grains of all the ear heads become chaffy they become shrivel or fail to mature and bear black fungus spot also so this bug may cause up to 40 50% damage of the crop in this video you can see that rice bugs feed by inserting their needle like mouth parts into the new leaves tender stem and developing grains and in turn the plant reacts to repair the tissue and seal the wound and when injuries accumulate the plant becomes stressed which can lead to growth retardation of the grains and some grain and plant deformation also so excessive feeding can cause yellow spots on the leaves this reduces the photosynthesis and in the extreme cases can damage the vascular system of the plant also moreover puncture holes also serve as point of entry for several plant pathogens such as the fungus 
that causes sheath rot disease. And as I have told you earlier, most economically important damage is caused when the adults and nails feed on the developing grains. Such damage causes discoloration of the grains which reduces market quality. Let us see how we can manage this pest. For the management of rice gandhi bug, we had to remove all weeds from the fields to prevent the multiplication of the gandhi bug during the fallow periods. So, paddy growing areas should not have any wild grasses in the surroundings. Also, the leaves having eggs should be clipped off and burnt. Use of light trap is quite effective as light trap attract the bugs and they can be killed easily. Monitoring of the rice field on the regular basis is necessary. If somebody sees 5 bugs per 100 ear heads at flowering stages, then only use insecticides, otherwise don't. So again, these are the cultural and mechanical control which I have explained you earlier. Next is the biological control. In this, we can use different parasitoids like the wasp, grion, nixoni is an egg parasitoid of this pest which can remove the eggs of this pest. Meadow grasshoppers, conocephalus, longipennis feed on the rice bugs eggs. So if we increase the population of these grasshoppers, they will feed eggs of the bugs and the population of rice bugs will be decreased. Many spiders like Tetragnetha javana and Neoscona thysi, they prey on the nymphs. So we can introduce these to the rice fields to control the Leptocorisa vericornis. Now the chemical control which is our last option to control the pest. Malathion 5% are very effective against the Leptocorisa. Carbiril 5% can also be used. We may apply these insecticides at the rate of 25 kg per hectare as dust to control the insects. The rice plants can also be dusted by 0.25% BHC. But we must not use chemicals indiscriminately because chemicals are very harmful for the human life, wildlife as well as our beautiful environment. When we are going for the rice cultivation, at first we must consider preventive measures to control the insects and diseases. We must give priority to cultural control and biological control than chemical control because chemicals do harm to our environment where biological control is eco-friendly. We can practice chemical control to save our crops when severe attack has done by the rice pests. The next pest is rice grasshopper. Zoological name of this pest is Heroglyphus venian. Regarding the systematic position, this pest belongs to class Insecta, order Orthoptera, and family Acrididae. Hieroglyphus is widely distributed in paddy growing areas all over India, especially in eastern Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Regarding the host plants, it is a major pest of paddy crops but also feeds upon other crops like maize, jowar, pajra, sugarcane, arhar, and grasses also. Let me tell you about its identification or general appearance. Adult rice grasshoppers are shining greenish yellow in color and about 40 mm to 55 mm in length. Hieroglyphus banyan bears three black transverse lines on its pronotum or thorax. Regarding the habits of grasshopper, these insects have single brood in a year. So there is only one generation in one year. Adult female rice grasshopper lays eggs in the field buns in the masses of 30 to 40 eggs. The male insect dies after copulation and the female dies after the oviposition. The adults have long hind legs for hopping. Adult hoppers appear immediately after rains 
and eggs are laid in September and November. These eggs hatch out in June and July of the following year. Till then, the eggs are dormant. Regarding the life cycle, it is completed in three stages, egg, name and adult. The adult female rice grasshopper lays 30 to 40 eggs in the pods or masses about 5 cm to 8 cm deep in the soil in the months of September to November. These eggs remain dormant in the field till about June or July when they hatch into tiny nymphs after the first shower of the monsoon. The newly hatched nymphs are generally yellow colored and with many reddish brown spots. They become greenish as they grow. These nymphs grow and turn into adult grasshoppers by the end of September. During this period, they undergo seven molds. Male rice grasshopper dies soon after the copulation, while the female starts egg laying and die after the oviposition. As far as nature of damage is concerned, both the nymphs and the adults are damage causing stages. They damage paddy crop by feeding on leaves and shoots. In severe infestation, they move from field to field over large areas. Due to this, plants are completely defoliated. They also eat up the newly formed ear heads. As a result, yield can be reduced by more than 50%. The next pest is the rice stem borer. First, we will go for its taxonomic status. So this pest belongs to class Insecta, order Lepidoptera and family Pyrellidae. Its genus is Triporiza and species is Insertulus. So zoological name of rice stem borer is Triporiza Insertulus. Next is the distribution. Triporiza Insertulus is distributed throughout India. It is a major pest of paddy in Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Tamil Nadu and Bengal. So it is found mainly in the coastal regions of the India. Regarding the host plants, it is a monophagous plant as it is a specific pest of paddy crop and feeds only on it. Regarding its general appearance, the adult moth is 15 to 20 mm long. It is light brown in color. Female mood is bigger than the male mood and has distinct black spot on each of its four wings. And the male mood bear numerous small brown dots along the subterminal areas and 8 to 9 near the tip of its four wings. So there is a sexual dimorphism present in this insect. Regarding the habits of rice tambora, it becomes active after dusk. That is, in the evening, lifespan of the adult is 5 to 10 days. The caterpillars bows into the stem and causes dead hearts as they feed on the soft tissue of the stem. There are about 2 to 5 generations in one year. This pest pupate inside the stem. Regarding the life cycle, it is completed in 38 to 45 days. As I have told you earlier, that life cycle consists of four stages, eggs, larva, which is caterpillar in this case, pupa and adult. The adult female moth lays 200 to 300 eggs during its lifespan of 5 to 7 days. The eggs are laid on the undersurface of the tender paddy leaves in 2 to 5 clusters of 6 to 100 eggs each. Egg clusters are covered with a tuft of buff colored hairs of the female. Freshly laid eggs are oval, flattened and dirty white in color. Eggs become darker and turn brown at the time of their hatching. After 6 to 8 days, eggs hatch into tiny black headed caterpillar. Newly hatched caterpillar crawl along the leaf plates and upon reaching the leaf sheath, enters through the space between the leaf blade and inner sheath and soon bore into the stem and starts feeding inside causing the dead hearts. During the heading stage 
of the paddy, the caterpillars bore directly into the peduncle and damaged the inner walls of the stalk, causing the white ear heads. This larva grows to the length of 25 mm and during growth period undergoes 6 molds. The larval period lasts for 20 to 25 days. Full grown caterpillars are smooth, yellowish white in color with velvety texture. Then the adult, adult moth lives for 5 to 7 days and the whole life cycle is completed in 35 to 55 days. Regarding the damage, larva that is caterpillar is the damage causing stage in the life cycle. Stem borer is the major pest of rice as caterpillars bore into the stem near the root causing dead hearts especially to the central shoot which easily comes off when pulled. When the plants are attacked at the flowering stage, the ear heads dry up causing white ear heads. White ear heads means devoid of grains. There may be a loss of 10 to 20 percent of the crop yield. The next pest is rice beetle. Zoological name is Hispa armigera. Oliver. Regarding the systematic position, it belongs to class Insecta, order Coleoptera and family Chrysomelidae. Regarding the geographical distribution, this paddy pest rice hispa, also called rice beetle, is practically found all over the India. Again, this is a monophagous pest, so only feeds on rice plants. Regarding the general appearance, it is blue-black in color. It is a small insect about 10 mm in length. It has two long antennae with black bristles on its body. The adult female is bigger than male and commonly it is called as Dhanka Hispa. Regarding its habits, the entire life cycle is of 20 to 30 days. The adults live on paddy leaves and feed on green scrappings. The grubs also feed on the leaves. Adult females lay, lay eggs singly into the tissue of young leaf near the tip. The grub pupates inside the burrow in the leaf. This stage lasts for 7 days. Pupa emerges out in the form of an adult by puncturing the epidermis of the leaf. Now let us see the damage. The main damage is caused by the adult and the grubs. Adult beetles are surface feeders, so scrapping out green matter and eat it up. Grubs are leaf miners. They penetrate into the leaves from the tip to the base and feed on tissues between the two epidermal layers of the leaf. And due to this, crop remains stunted and dry up. So in case of his spa, both the grubs and the adults cause damage and the crop reduced up to 20 percent. So this is all about the pests of patty and now in this session we are going to discuss that how different questions may be framed from this chapter. So these questions may be framed in two categories. First is very short answer type questions which you have to answer in two to three lines or sometime in a single word. And these questions will cover up the first compulsory question of your paper. Second category of questions is short answer type questions which you have to answer in a single paragraph. And sometimes a diagram is also needed to support your answer. So let us see how different questions may be framed. So first is very short answer type questions. The first question from this category is why? Leptocorisa varicornis is called as Gandhi bug. Second is why Gandhi bug is placed in order Hemiptera and not in Orthoptera. Third question is enlist two morphological features of 
राइस गंधी बग नेक्स्ट इज नेम द डैमेजिंग स्टेजेस ऑफ ट्रिपुरेजा हाउ इट डैमेज द क्रॉप नेक्स्ट इज गिव द साइंटिफिक नेम ऑफ राइस ग्रास ऑपर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज द एक्सटेंट ऑफ डैमेज कॉज्ड बाय लेप्टोकोरिजा वेरिकॉर्निस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज राइट द सिस्टमैटिक पोजिशन ऑफ राइस बीटल एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस कैटेगरी इज हाउ राइस बर्ग डैमेज द क्रॉप नेक्स्ट कैटेगरी इज शॉर्ट आंसर टाइप क्वेश्चन एंड फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस कैटेगरी इज वट आर द हैबिट्स and damage caused by hieroglyphus banian second question is write about the general appearance and control measures of gandhi bug third question is explain the life cycle of gandhi bug so here to, you are to explain the whole life cycle of gandhi bug next is give the systematic position of important rice pests so there are four different pests of rice is in us syllabus so you have to write the classification of all the four pests of rice next question is write short note on rice stem borer and the last question from this category is and lists the habits of hispa rice stem borer and rice grass hopper so in this question you have to write the habits of all the three insects last category of questions are long answer type questions which are explanatory in nature so first question from this category is write about the general appearance habits life cycle and control measures of gandhi bug next is write short notes on following first is rice stem borer second is rice beetle and third is rice grass hopper so do all the questions make a pdf and send to your teacher in your college practice of these questions helps you in the examination so good luck thank you